Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Eggplant Escabeche. That's right, if you've ever been sitting around thinking, I wonder what Chef John's second favorite eggplant dish is. Well, this is it. And it would be number one if it wasn't for fried eggplant. And while I generally introduce these videos telling you how easy they're going to be, that's really not the case here. While very simple, I would not describe this as an easy recipe, since there are a bunch of ingredients to prep and a fair number of steps. But once this is finished and you're enjoying it on some grilled bread, all that effort will more than make sense, as this is one of the most delicious things you'll ever taste. So let's go ahead and get started with our veggies. And there we can see the star of the show, one large eggplant. And then I'm also going to be adding a zucchini, because I had one to use up. And then lastly, we'll also be adding some fire roasted chilies. So let's go ahead and start with our eggplant. And what we'll want to do is cut off the ends. And of course, we're going to use a male eggplant, because they have less seeds. And how you can tell is, of course, looking for that round marking. That's a male. Remember the hashtag, dots not slots. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, I will explain on the blog post. But anyway, we're going to trim off the ends and then peel the eggplant, but not totally. Okay, for appearance sake, I do like to leave a little bit of the skin. Some people leave it all, but it's a little tough. So for me, this is the best of both worlds. But how much to peel is going to be up to you. You are the Rachel Ray of your escabiche. And then what we'll do once that is fully or partially peeled is cut it in half lengthwise and then turn it and cut it across into hopefully evenly sized pieces. Probably something close to a quarter inch. As you well know, the exact size is not the biggest deal. The big deal is you pick a size and stick with it so these cook at the same rate. So we will go ahead and slice up our eggplant and transfer that into a nice large bowl. And then we'll do the exact same thing with our zucchini. And that one will slice at a little bit of an angle to make those pieces a little longer. And then what we need to do once our veggies are prepped is toss them with a couple tablespoons of kosher salt. And I would say this is probably the most important step because what's going to happen is we toss these vegetables with the salt it's going to draw out moisture, which is going to do three things. It's going to improve the texture, it's going to concentrate the flavor, and it's going to remove some of the bitterness. So what we'll do is we'll toss those very thoroughly, and then let them sit out at room temp for 15 minutes. And you'll see as those sit, they're going to kind of soften up and get very, very damp. And they're actually going to look like they're sweating, which is okay. That's what we want. So like I said, we'll let those sit for 15 minutes. And while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and mix up our garlic oil which not surprisingly starts with two or three cloves of finely crushed garlic, to which we will add some dry oregano. We'll also add some fresh later, but we do want some dry here as it's one of the signature flavors. And then we also want to add a healthy dose of chili flakes. Although you can tell from the seeds I'm getting down to the bottom of the jar. Don't worry, I'm gonna add a little more later. And then last but not least, we will add our olive oil and we'll give that a mix with the whisk. And that's it, we can just set that aside until needed. And at this point, we'll go back and check our veggies, which have been sitting out for, like I said, 15 minutes. And what we'll need to do is transfer these now pretty wet vegetables into a strainer, because we need to take them over to the sink to rinse off the salt. So we'll go ahead and place those under some nice, fresh, cold water, and we will rinse off that excess salt, which has served its purpose. And even though we're rinsing the excess salt off, you'll be surprised how much is absorbed by those vegetables. Okay, we'll probably add a little bit of salt later, but even with the rinsing, these are pretty much fully seasoned. And then what we'll do once those are fully rinsed is let them drain while we set up our vinegar mixture. So into a saucepan, we will add one cup of white vinegar. And I'm actually using a blend here. I'm doing half a cup of champagne vinegar and then half a cup of regular white wine vinegar. And then to our vinegar, we'll also want a splash of water. And that's it. That's the mixture we're gonna blanch our veggies in. So let's head over to the stove and bring this up to a boil over high heat. And as soon as that mixture comes to a boil, we'll go ahead and add our vegetables. And I know it doesn't look like there's enough liquid to cook these, but there is. Because as you'll see, these really do collapse and shrink down. So what we'll do is we'll add those veggies in and then quickly cover this. And we're going to cook this for about five minutes or until our pieces of eggplant go from something that's kind of firm and white to something that's more soft and translucent. And no, that's not the lid that goes with this pot. But I'm using this one because it's see-through. And what I like to do is let that go for about a minute before giving it a stir. And you can see those veggies are already softening. And then I'll cover it back up, let it go for another couple minutes, give it another stir. And by the second mixing, there should be just enough liquid to cover, almost. And then we'll cover that back up and go for another couple minutes for a total cooking time of about five minutes or until your vegetables look a little something like this. And as soon as we've determined our veggies have gone long enough, we'll remove those from the heat and transfer them into a strainer where we will let those cool down to room temp, but do not 
repeat, do not discard that cooking liquid because we're definitely going to add some of that back in. All right, so our eggplant and zucchini are prepped, and we can move on to fire roasting our peppers, which I like to do over a fire. And this time I went with two red Jimmy Nardello peppers, as well as one green hatch chili. Oh man, people go crazy for the hatch chili. I never really figured out why, but I don't say too much. Let them have their fun. But anyway, we're going to fire roast those peppers. And we've demoed this before, so I'm going to kind of fast forward. But basically, we're going to char off that skin and soften and sweeten those peppers. And then once those are thoroughly charred and cool enough to handle, we will scrape off that charred skin. And yes, we're also definitely going to remove the seeds. And we'll go ahead and slice that up any way we want. I'm going to do some short little strips here, but a dice is also nice. So I sliced up my hatch chili and my two Jimmy Nardellos, or Jim Nardello, as its friends call it. And then once our peppers are set, we can move on to final production. So to our bowl of drained eggplant and zucchini, we will add our sliced peppers, along with about a quarter cup of that vinegar cooking liquid. We will also at this point add some fresh herb. In two forms, we'll do some freshly chopped Italian parsley, as well as some fresh oregano. And then we'll go ahead and finish this off by transferring in our garlic oil mixture. And please use a spatula. You want to get every drop of that stuff. And then what we'll do is give this a gentle but thorough mixing. And once we've done that, we'll give it a little preliminary taste for salt. As you know, we won't do final seasoning until this is ice cold. But I could tell it needed a little bit, so I did add a little more salt here, along with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper, because I saw it sitting there, and I hadn't used it yet. So we'll mix that up. And if you were ready to eat this right now, I have some terrible news. We really need to pop this in the fridge to let those flavors develop. So what we'll do is wrap this up and pop it in the fridge for at least six hours. At least six. I really think you should do it overnight, but at least six. So I actually ended up letting mine sit in the fridge for about eight hours, at which point we can pull it out and move on to the final touches. So first up here, we'll give it the old toss and taste. So we'll give it a mix. We'll give it a taste. Because now that it's ice cold, we can really tell what it tastes like. So I decided mine needed one last pinch of salt, as well as a little more chili flake, without as many seeds. And then above and beyond final seasoning adjustments, the last thing I like to do is add a little bit of vegetable oil to this. Okay, not olive oil, just a little bit of canola oil or something like that. And what this does to the appearance is give it a little extra shine, since cold olive oil is a little bit cloudy. So as almost everything in this, that's optional, but I do it. And if you want to be just like me, you will too. And then once that's mixed in, finally, our eggplant escabeche is done. And while it looks like those vegetables are horribly overcooked and soft and mushy and mushy, they are not. They are surprisingly toothsome, not to mention incredibly flavored. So let's go ahead and serve this up by transferring it into some kind of glass container. And while I will fully admit this doesn't look like the most beautiful stuff in a mixing bowl, as you can see by transferring it into some kind of clear glass jar like this, it gets significantly more gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up this clear sealable jar and top it off with a little more olive oil, just because. And then once we have that looking just like we want, we'll transfer that next to some toasted bread. And yes, extra credit if you do it on a charcoal grill. And then for a final touch, because my oregano is blooming, I added this beautiful flowering sprig. Although you know what, it could have been marjoram. Not sure, but close enough for YouTube. And that's it, our escabiche is ready to enjoy. So let me go ahead and pile some up on this grilled piece of bread using a cocktail fork, which proven scientific fact makes everything taste better. And that, my friends, is just an insanely delicious, shockingly addictive bite of food. You can sort of describe this as pickled vegetables meet marinated vegetables, but that's not even remotely close to doing it justice. I would go with the flavor explodes in your mouth, but that's just such a cliche and borderline inappropriate sounding. So let me just finish up by saying this. I know people that hate eggplant, loathe eggplant, and even those people love this. Of course, I don't tell them it's eggplant, but still, the point is, they love it. So sure, it's a little bit of work, and there's a few steps, and you have to wait hours to eat it. But despite all that, I'm pretty confident you will have no regrets. That is just how amazing this stuff is, okay? So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.